Hi, I'm Dave from Garmin. We're going to talk about the capabilities of the G5000 upgrade for your BeachJet 400A or Hawker 400XP that will reduce your workload during the approach and landing phases of flight. In this video, we'll be flying the Eagle 6 arrival with a Winslow transition into Phoenix Sky Harbor, followed by an ILS to runway 25 left. Now we're getting closer to the Phoenix area on our flight. We are on the Eagle 6 arrival with a Winslow transition into Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. At this point in time, we can kind of look up here on the map and we can see how far out we are. We're 33.6 miles from Winslow. And there's the uh, remaining fuel on board and our leg time, all that type of information. Now, if we look down in the flight plan, we can see that we've got our arrival that we had loaded earlier and all the altitudes of our arrival. So this will fly fully coupled the full descend via arrival. Also, if you ever want to edit a VNAV waypoint, you go to the altitude field. Let's say we want to cross Winslow at 360. I can just touch the uh, altitude field next to Winslow. I want to descend and I want to cross right at it at 360, enter and then create. So that created a waypoint. Then I could go and touch flight path angle, change the flight path angle, or put a speed constraint in for that waypoint. And if I want to make that crossing, I would just go up to my altitude controller, dial at least 360 or lower, and I would go ahead and arm VNAV on my autopilot. And I can look here, top of descent is 2 minutes and 20 seconds away. At our current speed, vertical speed to target is going to be about uh, 23, 2400 feet per minute. If I look over here at my autopilot scoreboard, V path or path is armed. So that means once I hit top of descent, it's going to automatically capture that descent. Now, if I want to go down and fly, continue on the descent and fly the whole descend via. It's all in cyan, so I'm good to go. All I need to do is dial my lowest altitude of my arrival. So that's 4,000 feet. Let's say I actually go here and dial down to uh, 4,000 feet. So I've got that all set up and it's gonna actually fly the whole arrival fully coupled on VNAV. As we come back, we're flying along. Since we're still, oh, just about a minute out, right at one minute from top of descent, you're gonna get a verbal saying vertical track. And at that point, you're gonna look over and your VNAV needle right over here is gonna appear. So three, two, one. There I heard vertical track and I have my one minute from top of descent. So I go back, verify, path is armed, and I have my lower altitude set in my descend via. Now, it's just wait for the airplane to descend down. As we're waiting for that, and it is going to capture V-Path, let's say we want to go ahead and pick up ATIS into, uh, into Phoenix. I would come over to my FMS controller, press Waypoint Info, Airport. There's Phoenix, and I could go to Frequencies. And I see ATIS, and I'm going to go put that in my number two com active. And I just press monitor, and now I'm listening to ATIS. And it looks like they're still using runway 25 left. So I'm going to prepare for runway 25 left for the, uh, for the ILS going into, uh, going into Phoenix. Before we do that, I want to notice we just captured VPATH and we are going down to our selected altitude of 4,000 feet. If we looked in the flight plan, we would have noticed that 4,000 feet is the last altitude. If I dial an altitude below 4,000 feet, it says it's going to Alt-V. It's going to stop at the 4,000. If I dial one higher or equal and say Alt-S, it's going to stop at my selected altitude. So now we're flying the arrival in, we listen to the ATIS, we want to load up the approach. So we just go to the home key and approach as a procedure. We go to procedure, 
we touch the approach button. Now we look, because we loaded the arrival for 25 left, it defaulted to ILS 25 left in our box. We are in a radar environment. In this case, let's say we're going to plant on vectors to final. If they were already vectoring me, I would load and activate the approach. But in this case, I'm just preloading it. Now, if we go back, we'll see it has our vectors to final and the approach loaded up in our flight plan. Behind the scenes, it already tuned our localizer frequency for us. And we're going to see that when we switch over to the ILS at the end of the uh, at the end of their arrival. So really, everything is set up. One thing I would probably do at this time while I'm flying along is pull out a paper chart, or I can go to my screen and just press Chart Selection, and I'm going to go to Approach, and select two five left. Probably what I would do is go real quick down to the bottom, look and see thirteen twenty six is my minimums. On my controller, I go to Utilities, Minimum, and put in my 1326. Enter. And now I can see my minimums are set up over here. Now is a good time to brief the approach plate while you've got it up. You can also zoom in, zoom out, and pan around with the G5000. At that point, I'm pretty much done looking at the map, and I'm just going to fly the arrival. One thing I would like to point out on the map is you'll see this ring on the map right there. It says 17 minutes. And that ring is where our fuel is going to be. I believe we set this up as a 45 minute reserve. And there's our range ring when we would run out of fuel at our current burn and current ground speed. So it looks like we're going to be fine going in, not just but we aren't going to have a whole lot of extra fuel. Everything looks good. We're doing the descent. And you're going to notice as we look over here, this crossing is at or above 18,000. We're on the VNAV profile over here. It has that 18,000 as we descend down to 4,000 feet. And this is going to bridge the whole descent via going into, into Phoenix. Now, the beauty of the simulator is I can go into the setup and speed up our flight a little bit. So I'm going to make it about three times faster on our arrival. So I just sped it up as we're coming downhill. And we're cruising on down. One of the things we might have picked up on ATIS was our barrow setting. This is really nice on the G5000. I can come up here, put in the barrel setting, let's say, oh, let's be creative, it's a 2992. It actually will pre-put in your barrel setting. Then when we descend through 18,000, we just push the barrel knob and that'll switch us. So I'll put in our 2992 and it's pre-loaded. And then the pilot can do the same thing on his side. So at this point, it really is just kind of sit back and uh, watch the system as we do the, uh, the arrival into Phoenix. Now we've kind of sped things up and we're getting at the final end of the arrival and into the approach into uh, to Phoenix. So as we're coming down, we've met all our crossings. Once we get close enough, it'll show that we've got the uh, ID for the ILS and the frequency shows up down here. And we actually have ghosting needles of the localizer and the glide slope as we continue our descent on down. And we're gonna do our final turn in on the approach. And I still have this going fast speed. We'll get it back down to normal speed on the approach. So let's say at this point they say uh, zero hotel pop, fly present heading, Join the localizer you're cleared for uh, ILS 25 left. So I would just go back to my procedure key. I can activate vectors to final. It's auto slewed in. I would press approach mode and I will turn in and intercept the ILS going into Phoenix. Get 
radar turn on. And we're about to capture glide slope. Gear comes down, landing lights on, center my heading bug. Missed approach instructions were up to 5,000 feet, so I'm going to arm my set my missed approach altitude. So as we look, what we're going to see once we get established on the glide slope, notice this little flight path marker. That projects where we're going to go. Now right now, it's not very good that they gave us 2.5. We've kind of got a quarterly 25-knot uh, tailwind. Not ideal. But uh, that flight path marker being at the end of the runway projects where we're going to go. And it's actually one more thing saying everything's all right with the world. I really like synthetic vision again on, the, on an approach. Because this is what it looks like without it. And this is what it looks like with synthetic vision. Pretty dramatic difference. So right now to our missed approach point. Runway 25 at the end is 4.7 miles. And we're going down to 1326 to go missed. The awesome thing with the G5000 is in the actual airplane, the simulator doesn't work quite this way. All you're going to do is hit the go around on the throttles and bring up power and then clean up the airplane. What we're going to do when you hit the go around buttons, besides pitch up, if you have our under speed protection option, the autopilot's even going to stay coupled and it's going to switch automatically from the green needles back over to GPS and the pink needles. So as far as our system goes, you hit the go around on the throttles, everything pitches up, the autopilot pitches up, then you just push nav and it's going to fly the published mist. So go around and nav is all you would have to do on a G5000, except for add the power, gear and flaps up. Now again, on the simulator, it doesn't work quite as uh, cleanly, but we're gonna go ahead and pitch up. This would automatically switch over when we hit the go around to the pink needles. And now we can push nav on our autopilot. And now it's going to fly the missed approach procedure. Climb to 3,000 feet as it shows in the flight plan. Then we're going to fly heading 130 to intercept the course outbound off the Phoenix VOR. And that's it. That's the basics of using the capabilities of the G5000 during approach and landing. To learn more about the G5000, watch the other videos in this series.